Hi and welcome to my channel. So we're going to be talking about my all-time favorite topic, UK visa sponsorship jobs for nurses. So if you're somebody that you trained overseas, then obviously you're an overseas qualified nurse. So whether you're out of the UK or you're already in the UK as an overseas nurse working as a carer or working in another sector, trying to transition back into nursing or obviously midwifery, then this information is going to be perfect for you and for your circumstances. So if you're new to my channel, you're obviously welcome. If you are already turning subscriber as usual i absolutely appreciate your time and i hope that you're finding this helpful so if you haven't joined this family take this opportunity to hit the subscribe button below because you want to be the first person that is notified every single day when i drop a new video on here nursing is a very prestigious you know profession it's an amazing qualification so if you're watching this and you're a nurse overseas or midwife or you're already in the uk worse still if you're working in another job like a carer job and you're not transitioning into nursing you're not dedicating time you know for you to transition back into nursing then please you are missing out on massive opportunities if you are an overseas candidate and you've done the you know the normal processes and you're looking for a job Again, this is going to be perfect. So I'm going to talk about those companies recruiting, what to look out for, how to enhance your application to make sure you are obviously successful. And so we're going to go into all those details and the nitty gritty. If you're not aware, even before I get into all of that, I do have a free newsletter. I've dropped the link in the comment section below where I share information such as this directly to your inbox, visa sponsorship opportunities for teachers, nannies, carers, nurses, you know, all sorts of jobs. NHS jobs, obviously, apprenticeships, which is where you get paid to work and study at the same time. But if you're somebody who is considering getting into nursing, I also share lots of extensively detailed information and pathways on this channel about all of that. So join the newsletter. It's completely free. You drop your name and email and you're part of it. You're also going to see my contact details on there. That's my WhatsApp number and my email address. So that if you're thinking, Melvis, I need support with this process. I've been going through it for a long time. And I need somebody to guide me that hand holding, then you can get in contact with me. Like I said, you've got my WhatsApp number as well as my email address. So anyone that is convenient for you is absolutely fine. So I'm going to talk about this in three different ways. And if you're not aware, I'm a nurse myself. So I started as a carer in the UK, which is why I'm very passionate about all these healthcare and nursing jobs specifically. I started as a carer, then I studied nursing, you know, for three years in the UK. After that, I've done my mentorship in nursing qualification at master's level. I did that as an apprenticeship. So I was paid to work and study at the same time. And then I went on to, you know, get into very senior positions. I've worked in management. And then I went on to do another master's in advanced clinical practice, which I did for three years. Also, as an apprenticeship, I was paid quite a lot of money to work and study at the same time as well. And I currently work as an advanced nurse practitioner, which is the most senior clinical nursing job that there is in the profession. So when I'm talking about these opportunities, I know about them i've got a lot of experience i've got a lot of knowledge when it comes to this if i can permit myself to say that and so that is why i'm sharing all of this with you because when you've gone through that journey yourself then you know it's so much better you know to talk about those experiences to share that and you know to support that which is why i've got my coaching program where i offer support with all these different processes um through that if you're keen obviously to find out more about that program if you check the description box below or the about section of this channel you're going to see more information about my private coaching program where i offer one-to-one -one tailored individualized and personalized guidance to those people who are members you know it's not a walk in the park you know it needs work it needs effort but you get the guidance that you need so that you are not kind of running towards the wrong direction away from what you're trying to achieve so again if you need to contact me to find out what is in this for you how can i support you personally because everybody's circumstance i can tell you is different and whatever your circumstance is there is a way out for you and so if you need to speak to me about it you know to know whether or not that program is right for you like i said check the comment section below and you can contact me there directly and so we're going to put this um into three different sections the first thing is we're going to talk about care homes obviously nhs and then private hospitals because these are really the main places where if you're an overseas candidate you can apply for those jobs also i want to leave a comment in the comment section below are you a qualified nurse or midwife? Where are you currently based? You know, what are your personal circumstances? Which pathway are you pursuing? Because the NMC has made lots of changes and there are now pathways where you can work as an overseas nurse in the UK without necessarily going through the ALTA or OET. 
Again, if you need more information about that, leave a comment in the comment section. I'm more than happy to provide more details. I've done previous videos here about it. So leave a comment about your circumstances. Are you applying for jobs? Is it verification? Are you still studying? Are you still considering to get into nursing? Are you in the UK as a carer, but you're looking to transition? What is going on? And so... The first opportunity that I'm going to talk about when it comes to obviously visa sponsorship, I like it because, you know, it pays the highest, obviously, but there are pros and cons with every opportunity that you choose in life. You know, the second pathway, I like it because you're going to get the most support and it kind of pays the least of the three options. But you know exactly what to expect. And like I said, you're going to get the best support and the best opportunities when it comes to career progression. So if you're somebody like me, you're very keen, enthusiastic, passionate and interested in career progression, then option number two is going to be great for you. Option number three is the least stressful of all three options. So it's incredibly important that you get what all three are about and then you can decide you know, in a more informed way about what to go for. Because sometimes it's not just about the exams and the verification and all that to get a nursing job. It's also about which job do you apply for once you've successfully gone through that NMC process. It's a massive challenge. Obviously, if you're from a red list country, leave a comment in the comment section below. Which country are you from if you're not aware? And I can tell you whether it's a red list country or not. Literally, the only difference with red list countries is that you cannot apply for jobs through a recruitment agency but you need to do so yourself directly to these recruiting companies that we're talking about. And then if you're not from a red list country, you have the option to use a recruitment agency if you want. You don't have to, but you have the choice to be able to do that if you choose to. So that is a massive difference with the two pathways. So again, leave a comment in the comment section, which country are you from? So with the first option, like we've said, let's talk about the care homes. So if you're applying to care homes, and by the way, they're recruiting all the time. In case of numbers, if you're wondering, the UK is currently short of about 54,000 nurses. That's the official data right now. That's the official number. 54,000 nurses are urgently needed. And there is reliance on overseas nurses because that's where <laughs> that's literally where these nurses are going to come from. And even looking at the NMC data, half of the nurses joining the register are overseas trained, about 25,000 nurses a year are now joining the uk so it is a massive opportunity for everybody so care homes will pay you the highest you know amount of money you know as a starting point obviously but working in a care home is very different from an acute environment so if you're coming from a place where you've been working in an acute hospital and then in the uk you're applying to care homes it's going to be a massive difference because care homes are more like long-term conditions rather than acute. So if you're somebody who is keen on acute care, then a care home may not be perfect for you. But if your only focus is money, which means you want the place that pays the best, care homes are going to pay you the best starting salary. But in terms of progression and earning more over time, it's very challenging because, I mean, you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what's going to happen and all of that. Another thing also is that when it comes to support, work environment and all of that, I mean, it's not really the best for many people. But like I say, it's all about knowing what are your priorities. So when you sit down and put your priorities as a human being or as a nurse, you know, as a professional that you truly are, then you should know where it's best for you. By the way, if you enjoyed this content, I want you to hit the like button below. It lets me know that you enjoy content like this and obviously I should do more. If you need information about something really specific, again, drop that in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to share that with you because, I mean, YouTube is something that is very generic. It's difficult to tailor the information because, I mean, I've got no idea whether you're watching this you know, for yourself, you know, on behalf of a family member. But if you know anyone that can benefit from this, do share it with them and encourage them to go through this process. It's very challenging. The process, the exams, it's time consuming. It's costly as well. But it is something that is really worth it in the end because it's looking at the end product, looking at where you want to get to, that is really going to motivate you to carry on with all of this. So option number two is obviously NHS. I mean, this is something that I'm not going to be biased. I'm going to tell you now that this is my favorite option. You get the most support when you get started. You know, generally you get the best when it comes 
to induction, obviously. And in terms of long-term support, you're going to get the best long-term support as well. In terms of career progression opportunities, you're going to get the best when it comes to career progression because the NHS is government, which means that they've got funding. You know, they've got money basically to be able to train staff. So if you're somebody who is keen on progressing, you want to get a master's, you want to get a PhD, you want to progress to do a top up. Maybe you're somebody who's got a diploma in nursing or midwifery. The NHS can sponsor you to do that. But if you're with a private company hmm, or with a care home, you will need to be doing all of that yourself. So when you look at the extra pay that a care home will pay you, you need to think about the long-term goals. You know, what else are you going to achieve? One advantage also that you have getting visa sponsorship with the NHS is that you have more advantages. For example, parental leave, carer's leave, maternity leave, sick leave, you know, pension. The NHS beats all other companies, you know, for all the different jobs that are available. So again, when it comes to acuity, which is something that I've found in so many overseas nurses, like I say, I've got a private coaching program that I've had for several years now, supporting, you know, hundreds and hundreds of overseas nurses to come, you know, to the UK through this. And what I've realized is that many overseas nurses are very much used to the acute way of nursing. You know, but when you come to the UK and you're working within the NHS, you can continue with that acute nursing, because you can choose, do you want to work in intensive care? Do you want to work in elderly care? Do you want to work in diabetes? Do you want to be a research nurse? Do you want to be, you've got all those options, you know, within the NHS, which for example, in a care home, you do not have that because they don't have those specialist nurses or those other roles that are acute that you can get into. So that's something that is massive to think about. But when it comes to pay, the NHS is going to pay you, the starting salary is going to be the least compared to these three options. So again, if you're thinking about long-term benefits, you're thinking about career progression, you're thinking about training, courses, opportunities, funding, then the NHS is going to be the best option for you. Again, I want you to leave a comment in the comment section with all what I've said so far. What are your thoughts? What do you think is the best option for you between, say, care homes and NHS? Because now we're going to be talking about the private hospitals. And when we talk about these 54,000 vacancies, all these three sectors are recruiting. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of vacancies readily available. And one of the things that if you want me to really talk about the actual application and how it should be and all that, leave that in the comment section. I'm more than happy to do a video about that to support you. But if you need that one-to-one -one guidance, like I said, then I offer that through my private coaching program because it is impossible to offer one-to-one -one support from a YouTube video. I mean, it's not possible. So again, you can check the comment section. You see my contact details. You can contact me. You know, if you're somebody that you're part of the top 1%, by the way, because my coaching program is exclusively for the top 1% of people that like me are heavily interested and invested in their personal and professional development. Also, if you want to know more information about it, if you check the description box below or the about section of this channel, you're going to find a lot of information about that program just to give you an idea whether it's for you or not. So option number three, we're going to talk about private hospitals. Private hospitals, the biggest advantage they have is that they're the least stressful option. Imagine the, the, the type of people that go to private hospitals, I can tell you, very different. So the nurses there or the staff generally, because they also recruit carers, by the way, and all other sorts of um, professionals, you know, or people. They're not very, very stressful. That's the reality of it because you have fewer patients. You know what I mean? The workload is not as bad and all sorts of things. So very, very good. But in terms of career progression, they don't really have so many opportunities to progress like with the NHS. So it's kind of medium between NHS and care homes. So private hospitals come in the middle of that. Let me put it that way, in, even in terms of pay. So private hospitals pay more than NHS would pay, generally speaking, um, but it's also about how you're able to negotiate. So one big advantage with private hospitals is that if you're somebody who is good at negotiating, in fact, you're going to have an amazing deal because you can work with colleagues who are earning different amounts from you. Because if somebody is able to negotiate better, they're going to get a better deal. If somebody isn't very good with negotiating their pay, hmm, they're going to pay you lower than other people. In fact, there was one time a few years ago that I applied for a job in a private hospital. We took two months trying to negotiate pay. In fact, I ended up not going to that job because we didn't agree on how much I wanted to get paid because I wanted to get paid a whole lot of money. They were like, hey, Melvis, 
you know, we're going to pay you this. And every week they kept adding like 2,000, 3,000 more offering me. After two months, I was like, no, I'm going to withdraw my application. I'm no longer interested and I'm done. So that was how it ended because the more you're able to negotiate, then that's how it's just going to be. But they kept increasing my pay by like 2,000 every week saying, oh, Melvis, we've thought about it. We're going to offer you 2,000 pounds more. And then, two, and then I was like, no. This is how much I need to get paid. And then the next week, they would contact me again and say, Melvis, you've thought about your offer. We're going to pay you. I mean, I was just like, mm -mm, no, done. So that was how I turned down that offer. And I'm looking forward, hopefully, in the future to work with some of you <laughs> private companies. But so far, that's how my relationship with private companies kind of ended. Because you also need to negotiate about your, you know, your sick, sick leave, your annual leave, and all sorts of things. So, again... These are the options that are available if you're looking for jobs. It's up to you as a professional, you know, as an adult to negotiate a deal that is best for you. And they're all recruiting. Like we've said, there are over 54,000 declared vacancies at the moment. Sometimes applying can feel really daunting and feel like, where are all these jobs if I'm not getting an interview? But your application needs to be absolutely spot on. Sometimes it just needs time. It's not even about your application. You just need to carry on applying have that positivity in order for you to achieve really what you want. So again, what do you think about this? If you need more information specifically about, you know, how to apply or any other information, leave that in the comment section. But I wanted to highlight to you those companies that are actually offering sponsorship so that when you're looking, you know exactly what to look for and to know that there are obviously care homes or private hospitals and NHS and all three of them offer these a sponsorship to overseas workers so whether you're still out of the uk or in the uk it makes no difference they offer sponsorship so if you haven't subscribed to this channel hit the subscribe button now if you need to contact me check the comment section below my contact details are on there so that we can talk about your specific circumstances and what is in this for you so thank you and check this out here